Cool. Hey guys, welcome to Make Anything. I'm Devin. I just finished filming my video showing off all of my new springos, all these fruits and vegetables and pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns. Really fun stuff. I've been having so much fun thinking of all the different springos I could come up with. Uh, I've, I've struggled a lot too. Lots of failures that you guys might see more of in this video. But yeah, check out the check out the video of my collection where I really show all these off because this video is more about the behind the scenes. Today I'm gonna show you the whole process of making this grand pineapple springo. I think among all of these, this one's kind of the most impressive and it's also got a lot going on. So the, the pineapple was 3D scanned, I did the top in virtual reality, I used all sorts of free programs in between to, to make this work. So I'm gonna show you guys just how I did that in this video. It's a pretty intense process, there's a lot of work that goes into this, but it's so rewarding and so cool. So let's wrap up this intro and get right to it. The idea behind these tasty springos was to make very realistic fruit and vegetable springos using 3D scanning. And I did that with the help of Shining 3D's EinScan SP 3D scanner. They sent it to me to show you guys projects just like this. And the EinScan SP is a desktop 3D scanner as you can see, it comes with this turntable and that helps automate the scanning process. There's just this very simple calibration at the beginning and then it's ready to scan whatever fits on the turntable. So of course, I'm gonna need a nice and plump pineapple and I'm using some Uhu putty to really hold it into place to make sure it doesn't fall off as it's being scanned. As you can see, the scanner uses a series of flashing black and white screens to capture information using its two cameras and to create a 3D image. And here's what one scan got me. You can tell it's a pineapple, but it's not all there. But the cool thing is that the dedicated software that comes with this scanner lets you align several scans together to create a more full image. So I did several scans of the same pineapple at different angles, and I even used this little stand to help me get some sideways angles to really get a complete scan of this pineapple. The software has several settings as well in terms of how many scans you wanna do in a single revolution and if you want it to be a color model or black and white. In this case, I was pretty much just using down the line default settings. But as you can see, after a couple scans stacked together, I was able to get this really nice and complete pineapple, at least the bottom part of the pineapple. So let's go ahead and convert this into a watertight model so that it can be 3D printed more easily. And it's pretty impressive how well this EinScan software converts the point data that a 3D scan provides and turns that into a mesh like this. Of course, there are some extra things that got included in the scan, my putty and those little stands. Small parts of the pineapple moved between scans, but it's still overall a very clean model and we're gonna be able to fix that in the next steps. So for now, let's apply this simplification and export this. We'll export as an STL, and then we can go ahead and import that into just about any 3D modeling software. I'll start off by using Microsoft's 3D Builder. It's very simple, very easy to work with, and it's got some pretty powerful tools. So we'll import the model, and the scanner does export STLs to scale, so this is the correct size and all, but we do need to fix the orientation. So for now, I'm just gonna kind of rotate it by eye and try to make the pineapple as upright as possible. All right, that looks fairly decent. So the next thing we'll do is start cutting away some of the excess parts of the mesh that we don't actually want. 3D Builder comes with this split tool that lets you basically cut the model at a plane. So we'll use that tool a couple times. First, we'll cut off all this putty and whatnot on the bottom. We're gonna want a flat bottom for our springo anyway, so it's okay to cut off a bit of the pineapple at the bottom as well. Next, I'm gonna cut off the top part of the pineapple as well, since clearly it wasn't all included in the scan. The, the plant part on the top of the pineapple was a little bit too tall for the field of view for my scanner. And overall, it's just a very difficult part to print. So we're gonna go ahead and remodel that in virtual reality a little bit later. For now, we're just gonna give it a nice flat top and preserve the bottom of the pineapple. So we'll cut that part and then we'll just do a couple more 
rough cuts to start cleaning up that uh, little excess part of the model where I had the stands on the left and right sides of the pineapple. All right, as a final step before we bring this into Mesh Mixer, I'm just gonna run the simplify command since this is still a very high polygon model and I don't wanna be slowing down my computer with unnecessary detail. As you can see, there's a ton of triangles in this model. So we'll start out by just reducing that by half and then we'll go from there. All right, there it is, it's reduced. And as you can see, it looks nearly the same. So clearly we had more detail than we really needed. It looks like we need to repair the model here. So we'll run that command really quickly. And when that's done, we're gonna go ahead and save this out as another STL file. Now we can import that STL into Mesh Mixer. This is another fantastic free software. It may not be quite as simple as 3D Builder, but it's also very powerful. The first glaring issue that we wanna fix are these little bits of extra mesh that aren't actually part of the pineapple, that putty and just random floating parts. So we're gonna use the select tools and there's a few ways that you can select things. You can drag a lasso or you can use this spherical selection brush and that works quite well for these weird floating parts. You can also hold down control and click and drag with your right mouse button to expand or contract the current selection. So I'll use that to just expand this selection until it just touches the pineapple itself. Then I can just hit delete to get rid of all of that orange selection. And I'll go ahead and keep doing that to get rid of all of these floating parts that we don't want. Now, as we're doing this, we are gonna be leaving little holes in the mesh. And that's definitely something we don't want when we're done with this model, but there is an easy way to fix that as well. All we have to do is click analysis, click inspector, and then use the inspector tool to fill those holes. So we can just use the smooth fill for now and click auto repair. And after a bit of computing, those get all sealed up. Well, it looks like there's one hole right here that's just a little bit too complicated. It's definitely a weird one. So we'll actually just delete a little bit more of that face so that it's not so jumbled right there. So we'll delete a little bit extra and delete it until we have a cleaner hole to fill. All right, let's try the inspector again. There we go. Now we've got a nice smooth fill. Now that smooth fill is a nice quick way to seal the model and keep it watertight and printable, but those smooth patches also look a little weird on this very organic, complicated pineapple. So what I'll do next is use the Mesh Mixer sculpting tools to actually sculpt back some detail into those smoothed out sections. As you can see here, Mesh Mixer comes with a lot of different sculpting tools and combined, you can fix just about any little problem. So here you can see I'm just constantly adjusting the strength and size of this brush and I'm also switching between the draw brush and the pinch brush to try to bring back the original shape of the pineapple or at least something that looks like it fits in. This pineapple is a pretty complicated shape. Maybe it wasn't the best choice for my first 3D scan, but it's also gonna give me a lot of practice. I'm gonna go around the entire fruit looking for holes or just confusing shapes that I don't want to print out. And I'm just going to try to make it more printable without ruining the original pineapple shape. Pineapples have all these tiny little spines which are super cool, but this just wouldn't work well as a springo. So I'm going to smooth those down and reduce those pretty greatly. I'm cleaning it up, but I'm also going to make sure to try to maintain the original look. I'm going to have to speed through a lot of this because I really spent hours just working on all these little tiny details and trying to make it look clean while still looking like a pineapple. But I do have to share this one tool that is quite a game changer for me. And it's this shader with this red gradient underneath. And basically what this does is highlight any overhangs in the model. So basically we've got this dynamic indicator that shows us where all of the most extreme overhangs are. And that lets me go in with a smoothing tool or some of the sculpting tools and try to smooth out those overhangs and make it something that we can actually print without support material. As you can see, we've got all these tiny little overhangs across the entire pineapple and it would have been very difficult for me to notice and fix every single one without this little tool. So I really discovered it at just the right time. 
And I'm definitely going to be using this in the future whenever I sculpt something in virtual reality or in some kind of software where things like this are just going to happen. This shader is going to make it very easy for me to notice those overhangs and fix them and make models that are easier to 3D print. And that's something that's very important to me. The cleaner and easier my models are to print, the less people are going to fail and waste time and plastic and I just want to make 3D printing as pleasant for everyone as possible as well. So with that tool, I was able to go through and basically eliminate all the extreme overhangs. And once there was no more red on that pineapple surface, I knew that it was good to go. At this point, I think I'm ready to start modeling the top half of the pineapple. So I'm going to save this out as an STL once again, and I'm going to bring that into virtual reality using Gravity Sketch. If you watch my channel, you're familiar with Gravity Sketch by now. It's an awesome VR sculpting tool, especially for making solid models for 3D printing. And one of the really powerful features is that you can actually bring in any STL file into the virtual reality environment. Now I can't carve into this original model or anything, but I am able to draw all around it and reference it and really use it as a guideline for the second half of my model. So for this top of the pineapple, I'm going to use this kind of diamond brush and I'm also going to squash it so that I create these kind of thin blade-like strokes. And that just happens to be pretty close to how pineapple leaves look. So I played around with that a bit. I found a good balance between something that looks sharp but also isn't too thin that it won't print well. Once I've got all my brush settings looking good, I'll go ahead and just start drawing strokes and creating the top part of my pineapple. So I'll just create some shorter leaves on the outer perimeter of the top here. And then as we move towards the center of the pineapple, those blades will get longer. And I'm not gonna go for full realism in this case. I, I definitely wanna make sure that this is easy enough to print. And as long as it gets the idea across I think we'll be okay. I spent a lot of time adjusting and finessing here, so we'll have to speed through again. If you guys are really interested in the details of how Gravity Sketch works, I have plenty of tutorials where I use it. But basically, I drew the top part of the pineapple, and once I had a nice, solid-looking chunk, I'm gonna go ahead and save it out. So here we are. I'll import the top of the pineapple, and I'm also gonna bring in the bottom into the same file. So. That bottom part of the pineapple is the part that's to scale, and now I can kind of just adjust this top part by eye until it fits and looks good. Luckily, this isn't something that requires millimeter perfect measurements. I'm just trying to create something that looks good. So we'll position this, we'll scale it up, we'll rotate it, whatever we need to do to make it look good. All right, there we go. That's pretty nice. Although I did want to make some slight changes to the pineapple, so I'm gonna save these out separately once again as two different STLs. So here I imported both of those files back into Mesh Mixer. And I'm gonna use the sculpting tools again to make some small adjustments to the bottom of the pineapple here, just to have the intersection between the top and bottom look a little better. So I'll do some kind of dragging around of the model here. And I'm also gonna straighten things up just a little bit more. I'm also gonna do some sculpting on the top part of the pineapple. As you can see, down there towards the root, there's some weird stuff going on. So I'm gonna use some brushes there to kind of smooth it out and make it look more natural. And I'll also just run a smoothing brush over all of the parts really quickly just to kind of re-mesh it and reduce it and make it look a little more interesting, a little less regular. I also wanted to start working on the intersection of the top and the bottom, so I did a plane cut on the top, and I actually noticed some weird stuff going on in there. So I was able to kind of work on the inside with the select tool and delete those little floating meshes and weird intersections that we definitely don't want. So I cleaned that up, and then I used the inspector tool once again to seal any holes. I'm also going to select the bottom here and drag it down a bit to give me more of a connection point. All right, things are coming together. At this point, I'm gonna save out the two separate STLs once again, and then once again, I'm gonna move back into 3D Builder 
What I'm gonna do now is create that final split on the bottom of the pineapple to give us the flat surface for the bottom of the springo. I'll make that cut and we can also use this settle tool to have it lay flat on the build surface. And why not paint our two parts so that we can distinguish them from one another? There we go, that'll help us get a better preview of what we're working on. And then I'm gonna do a split for this top part of the pineapple as well. So I'll split it just below the point where it completely intersects with the bottom part of the pineapple. And then I'm gonna use the extrude down function and have it extrude down from the bottom of that part so that we have this kind of straight extrusion, which is what we're actually gonna use to stick the two parts together. So we'll do another split here and kind of determine how much of a connection we need between these two parts. I'm totally doing it by eye here, but I figured we just need about a centimeter or two of connection to have these stick together. So that looks pretty good. Next, we need to cut away from the bottom half of the pineapple so that we have a hole that corresponds with the top that we can stick together like two Legos. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is cut away this top part and then I'll paste it and use the scale tool to scale this up just a tiny bit. We'll do 104%. And then with only that top selected, I'll go and use this subtract tool, which will basically use the top as a cutting tool and cut that away from the bottom. So there we go. Now we've got this hole cut out and I can paste back the original top of the pineapple. So basically now we have a hole that's a little bit larger than the top of the pineapple so that we have some clearance so that these can actually stick together when they're printed out. At this point, I have two parts that could both be 3D printed and stuck together. If we were just creating a standard pineapple, we'd be done here. But of course, we want to make a Springo. So that means we're going to start moving into the big league with Fusion 360. I saved out both of those files again, and now I'm going to import the meshes into Fusion 360. We're not gonna actually work on the mesh, but we're gonna use it as a reference for the Springo cutting tool that we're basically gonna make now. Let's move this mesh to the ground and then we'll just hit okay. And at this point, I'll just use the move tool and kind of try to move this model and center it above the origin just by eye once again. We'll fix that a little bit more as we go on. So we'll hit okay and then let's create a sketch on the ground plane here. I'm gonna use the center diameter circle tool and make a circle that basically matches the diameter of the pineapple at its widest point. So it looks like it's about 130 millimeters. Now we can use the move command once again and center that model a little bit better now that we have the reference of that uh, circle sketch I made. All right, next I'll just go ahead and extrude this circle we made and extrude that to the top of the pineapple bottom. And basically what I'm doing here is creating a little stand-in model for the pineapple itself, which will make it a little bit easier to model the springo. I'll do a chamfer here at the bottom to better match the contours of the pineapple. I'm basically creating an overly simplified version of the pineapple here. I'll also do another sketch on the top here and make a smaller circle. And I'll do an extrude cut down to represent the cut we made into our actual pineapple bottom. Now I can hide the mesh and that's gonna make it a lot easier to see what's going on. And it's also just gonna help the program run faster since it doesn't have to deal with all these polygons on this complicated mesh. So there is our super simplified pineapple bottom. And now we can start creating our springo. So, to help out with that, I'll do a section analysis on this front plane, and then I'm gonna draw a sketch on the same front plane, and I'll start drawing out the profile for the inside cut that we wanna make on this pineapple. Since this is a springo, it needs to be hollow in the center, and so now I'm basically figuring out how large of a cavity I wanna create on the inside of this pineapple. I'll add this dimension here as a reference I'll make this 24.5 millimeters. And then here we want maybe eight millimeters below the cut and the end of the springo part. Next, I'll use the spline tool to create a nice rounded spline that will be our cut. 
on the inside of this pineapple. This is another part that I'm kind of playing by ear. I'm just making sure to keep the thickness of the wall relatively even. And I'm also gonna adjust the spline so that we don't have any overhangs greater than about 45 degrees. That way we can make this completely printable without support material. I also want a bit of a solid bottom, so I'll create this line and make it seven millimeters thick for the base of our Springo. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's next click on the Revolve tool and turn this profile into a 3D object. We'll revolve that around the center axis and I'm gonna create a new body here since we're trying to create the cutting tool. I'm gonna extend this top part with the press pull command. Basically, I'm creating a solid model that's gonna be what we cut away from the final pineapple. So we can clean it up a bit. I'll do a fillet there. I'll also create another tiny cylinder so that we can have a hole at the bottom of the springo. So that'll cut through the bottom there. Now it's finally time to actually do the springo. So I'm gonna select the bottom plane again and use this coil tool to create the spiral cut that we need for our springo. So we'll create this coil coming out from the origin and here it's having me select a diameter. I'm just gonna make sure it's smaller than the hollow core of our springo. I'll change the section shape here into a square and then I'm also gonna go up here and change the coil type to height and pitch. For the height, we basically just need it to go through the entire model, so we'll just drag that up. And for the pitch, I'm gonna make it 2.2 millimeters for this section size of two millimeters. Basically, that means we've got a two millimeter square, and that 2.2 means we'll have a 0.2 millimeter gap in between the coil. Let's make that a new body, and now the trick is to just use this press pull command and select this outer surface of the square spiral and drag it outwards. Just like that, we've created a springo. But wait, that's not exactly what I was trying to do here. I'm not trying to create a springo, but rather I want to create the shape that you cut out of something in order to make it a springo. So let's actually backtrack here and go back to making that coil. So this time the section size is gonna represent the space between the springo and the pitch will stay the same. So now we have this little 0.2 millimeter section and that's gonna be the cut of the springo. Now I'm gonna try to do the same thing, use the press pull tool and extend that spring, except Fusion 360 wasn't letting me do it. For some reason, I'm not able to offset this as much as I need to to cut my springo. My solution at the time was to create a sweep that uses that coil as a guide. But since then, I've learned that the easier way to do this would have been to just use several smaller offsets using that push-pull tool. And that'll allow you to create the full width that you need to. In any case, the outcome is the same. We have this giant rectangular spiral that is our cutting tool. We're gonna cut that out of our pineapple and it'll give us a springo. But I will mention that I did end up changing the section size of the pineapple cut. Rather than having 0.2 millimeters between the coils, I found 0.35 to 0.5 millimeters works better for something this large to create a springo that's easy to separate. So now we've got these solid parts that we want to cut out of our springo. We've got the coil and we've got the section that represents what we're going to hollow out at the core. I also made this ring along the bottom of the cutting tool to represent the bottom of the pineapple, just so it would be a little bit easier to line things up when I bring this back into 3D Builder. Anyways, now I've got this solid model of everything that I want to cut out of the pineapple. So I'm gonna save that as an STL and we'll bring that into 3D Builder along with the top and bottom models of the pineapple. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust the Springo cutting tool. I'll move it around until it's aligned as well as we can. And now we just need to cut it out, but we only wanna cut through the bottom. So for now, I'll use Control X to cut away that top part of the pineapple since we only wanna cut the bottom. And then with just the cutting tool selected, 
I'll use that subtract tool again, and boom, we have the springo cut out of this pineapple. Now I can use Control-V to paste the top part back in. On the side here, you can see there's a few extra parts. We can just delete those. They're just little tiny bits that were sliced and separated from the rest of the model when we did that springo cut, but they're tiny and you won't even notice they're missing. So there we go. Now we're just left with two parts, the top of the pineapple and the springified bottom. We'll save both of those parts one at a time, each as its own STL file, and then it's ready to slice and print. Here's a time lapse of me printing out the top of the pineapple using the Ender 3, and everything looked good, but I didn't realize just how old this PLA was, and I'm not used to PLA really going bad. We don't have too much humidity here in Southern California, but as it turned out, this PLA had gone a bit bad. So as you can see, there was quite a bit of stringing, and when I tried to take this model off of the build plate, it kind of just crumbled into pieces. Clearly not the desired result, and I'll save this failed print to recycle in the future. In the meantime, I printed it out again on the KR10S printer, which is a very interesting printer that blends two filaments together. This print here is the result of blending Matterhacker's Pro PLA light blue and neon yellow, and it created this perfect, really cool looking blue-green print. There was some layer shifting about halfway through the print, but it's not super noticeable, and overall, it looked good enough that I decided to just go ahead and live with it. I wanted to try the same thing with the springo part of the pineapple, blending Matter Hacker's Pro Yellow and Orange Build PLA, but with the first attempt, I noticed that the layers of the springo were fusing together, making something that would have been impossible to separate. That was the version with the 0.2 millimeter gap between the springos. As I mentioned earlier, that gap isn't enough for this large of a model, and I ended up changing that to 0.5 millimeters. Unfortunately, my second attempt at printing it on this printer led to a clog. So we're gonna have to go ahead and switch to a more trusty printer, the CR10S. Here you can see I'm printing out my version with 0.5 millimeter gaps between the Springo, and that has much more distinct layers and will be much easier to separate once this print comes off the bed. This one I printed with just the Pro Yellow PLA from Matter Hackers, and it looks really nice. Let's go ahead and see if we can separate this and turn it into a Springo. I grabbed my thinnest palette knife and just started wedging it between the layers of the Springo and carefully started working my way around, not even trying to split it open completely just yet, but just starting to loosen the layers. Eventually that coil will begin to separate, and once you get through, it becomes a lot easier to get the rest of it done. Although, with a Springo this big, it definitely still takes quite a bit of time, and you definitely want to be cautious and make sure not to accidentally snap it in half as you're completing this step. It is kind of meditative, and the crackling sound is quite nice. After running that pallet knife through the entire coil and separating all the layers, we finally have our Springo. Yes, that is just so cool. At first, we're still gonna have some little strings and bits of plastic flying off, but if you play with it enough, it'll end up cleaning itself off. Finally, let's see if these two parts stick together. I'll just go ahead and line it up and try to press it into place. And it was quite a snug fit, but that ended up working perfectly. It holds with friction alone, but I will end up gluing the two parts together just to be safe. But hey, we did it. We have a full pineapple Springo. It's a world first and it feels great. I mean, you guys can see how cool it looks, but holding this massive heavy Springo in your hands and playing with it, it's something special. I also made a half-scale version, and the idea behind this is exactly the same. 
And rather than shrinking the pineapple and remodeling everything, all I did here was change the Springo cutting tool, basically making the section size twice as thick, making the cut twice as thick, and then cutting into the pineapple and scaling it all down so that in the end, we still have this Springo with a 0.35 millimeter gap between the layers. I also made this little quarter scale version and at this size, it behaves a little bit differently, but it's actually really fun. It would be great for a bobblehead or just a little decoration on the dashboard of your car or something. Fun little Springo. There you go, guys. We did it. We made the Springo pineapple. As I said, it's a pretty intense process, but hopefully after watching this, you've got a decent idea of how I did it and maybe you can try your hand at making some Springos yourself. I know I'm not done, but yeah, there you go. That's my Springo tutorial updated. All these Springos are available at my mini factory for you to download and print. All right, well, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like the projects I'm coming up with here on Make Anything. Hope you'll stay tuned for the next one. Until then, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget, to stay inspired.